He said, verse 14, Deuteronomy 30. He said, but the word is very nigh unto thee. In your mouth and in your heart, that thou mayest do it. You see, in their own time, it was what? A doing. But in our time, it's a speaking. This is what surprised the angels. This salvation that we have received. Peter said, the angels seek to look into it. It was shocking to devil. All his life as a devil, you have to do something to get something from God. All his life as a devil. <laughs> then Jesus came and died. He thought he has won. Then a new race began. This one, you cannot condemn them. This one, you can't send them to hell. Once they believe in Jesus, they do nothing again. All they do is what? Talk. Talking. Yes, they will couldn't believe it. He said, come out. And before he opened his eyes, he has come out. Ah. <laughs> this one will just say, come out. Before he will say, who are you? Go and fulfill the law. Go and keep the Ten Commandments. Am I, are we mates? <laughs> he was, I mean, pushed everybody around like that. But this guy, one guy just got born again yesterday. Today, he said, come out. Before he could think, he was out. What happened? This guy. I thought it was yesterday. He was not a Christian. He said, no, 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 no. This is not true. He tried to go back. He couldn't go back. Then the guy moved away to another place. Come out! That one also jumped out. Ah. <laughs> they now discovered that this Christian, this is different. So what can we do to stop them? Let them not talk. The reason why a man will go to heaven or hell is not that he did something wrong, that he didn't say something right. Mm. Jesus Christ says, by your words, Matthew 12, verse 6, thou shalt be condemned. By your words, thou shalt be justified. Lift up your hands, speaking in tongues. Speak in tongues wherever you are now. Speak in tongues. Don't look around. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. As far as your eyes can see. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. He said, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with me. See the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the, Lord Jesus Christ the, love the love of God, and the fellowship, and the fellowship of, the of the Holy Spirit is with me. Is with me. Speak in other tongues. Speak in other tongues. Speak in other tongues. Thank you, choir. Thank you. Speak in other tongues. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost is with me every day. Every day, every day, every day, every day. Every moment, every minute, every second, every hour, every day. Throughout the year 2023, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship the communion of the Holy Spirit even now it's in abundance here even now 
Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Precious Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ascribe all greatness to you. We ascribe all honor, all worship. There is no God bigger than you. There is none greater than you, O God. The scripture says, your greatness is unsearchable. Your kindness, your loving kindness, your tender mercy, the psalmist said, is better than life. David said, because of that, my lips shall praise thee. David said, because of that, and I'm saying the same thing, early will I rise and praise your name. For your loving kindness, O oh God, is better than life. Thank you for loving us. Not just loving us, the great love. Ephesians 2 verse 4 says, the great love where which you loved us. The love is great. Oh, Father, we are grateful. Thank you for lavishing us with your love. The Bible calls us your beloved. The Bible says we are the beloved of the Lord, the object of your love. We are grateful, Lord, that of everything you have made, you have chosen us to be the reason why you are full of joy. We are thankful today. And even beyond that, we thank you for the gift of your word given to us in the Bible that we will not live in confusion and that we will know the right and the perfect way. Thank you for being so gracious to grant us the written word. We are so grateful. We are not in darkness. We are in light. We are children of light. We are children of the day. We are not the children of the night. That's what the Bible says. And today, our heart is full of light. By the Holy Ghost. He said you grant us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Oh, and the Bible says that the eyes of our spirit being flooded with light. Precious Holy Spirit, thank you for flooding the eyes of our spirit with light. That tonight we will understand the word. We will know how to apply the word. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for your awesome presence here. Thank you for your divine visitation to everyone in this meeting today. They will receive a visitation from you. Thank you, my Lord. Lift up your hands and thank him. He's a little lebradilo. Oh, Lord. We are so grateful. We yield our hearts and our minds as an instrument of righteousness in this meeting today. That the word of God will gain the dominion over our thoughts, gain the dominion over our minds. That our minds will be subject to the word. Precious Father, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord has been building us up because of the future he has for us. And to ignore what the Lord is teaching you is to ignore the future. Praise God. Praise God. Okay, thank you. The future is not far. As people think it's far. Where you are today in your life is based on what you said yesterday. We have to understand Christianity. Praise God. Christianity is not living a mystery life. It's not a mystery. No, it's not a mystery at all. There are, there are signals that shows that you will know if you're on the right track. What have we been saying in the last one week? I will tell you what your soul will be like in the next one year. In the life of faith, you need to understand these three laws. The first one is the law 
perfect law of liberty. That is huge. All those, these laws, we can be on one of them for one month and be teaching on them. The second one is the perfect law, I mean, the first one, the perfect law of liberty. The second one is the law of the spirit of life. It is the law of life. It is, this, it is that spirit that God breathed into Adam and he became a living soul. When that spirit is working, death cannot be there. Come on now. Are you listening? Death cannot be there. Nothing can decay. Nothing can lose value. That's what Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 1, in verse 3. He said, being born again, verse 3. Let me see. 1 Peter 1, verse 3. He said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again, Born again, begotten us again unto a lively hope. Have you ever seen a, it means a living hope? See, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, we've been anything we hope for is active, it's alive. Faith is what makes it alive. You see, he has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Next verse. To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and I love this, the part I want to see, and that faded not away. Praise God. It doesn't fade away. It doesn't lose color. It doesn't lose value. See. Let's read it in Amphibia Bible. It doesn't fade away, you know. All the money that you have not spent, that God has given to you, is still waiting for you. See? The day you wake up, you collect everything. All the money that you supposed to spend last year, year before, is still waiting. It's a born anew, look at it there, into an inheritance which is beyond the reach of change. Nothing can change your results. So when we start, before we start praying, let's know who we are. I am not praying so that I can change things. When God gave us the Holy Spirit, it's not to change things for us, to change people, to change cities. Me, I have an inheritance that cannot be changed. Are you listening to me? So we begin to understand prayers. If we think about it, we will get it. I've shown you the scripture before. I'll show you. If you just think about it, if I think of one million dollars, I will get it. You have to start thinking like that. If you think about it, you'll get it. Because he told us in Ephesians 3 verse 20 that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. So when it comes to prayer, it's beyond asking, even your thinking. Let's read from the Amphibia Bible, this particular scripture. Glory to God. Tonight is going to be a huge night. Now to him, who by in consequence of the action of his power, that is at work within us. Where is the power working? Within us, not from heaven. He's able to carry out his purpose and do what? Super abundantly. Far over. And above all that we dare ask or think. Now, you want to explain that thing. Infinitely beyond our highest prayers. <laughs> our highest desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. Even when you dream about it, it will come to pass. This is the life of a Christian. A Christian is not a beggar. We don't beg God, we don't beg man. Are you still with me? Yes, See? The challenge we have in our generation is that we come to church and there are so many versions of the Bible, so many ministers of the gospel, so many theories being preached all over the whole place, and God's people are just confused all over the place. But thanks be unto God. Through the man of God, Pastor Chris, knowledge is pouring into the churches. COVID-19 exposed them. 
COVID-19. Go and look for all ministers that you know that was wearing mask. Think about it. if Jesus is here, will he wear mask? No, think about it. As much as I say, Pastor, please now. Let's don't, let, don't let us go to that side. No, we can't, we can't close that chapter. We are going back there. Yes, sir. And if you are here and you are wearing mask, that means you don't know who you are. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you don't know who you are. And you, you, are, you, have not yet, you are not yet born again. <laughs> what did John 3.16 say? John 3 to 16, very popular scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in it should know what? Ah, you mean you know it? Should not perish. But have what? Everlasting life. How can you have everlasting life and are afraid of COVID? Because you don't have it. The Bible says the fearful will go to hell. <laughs> the fearful. Number one citizen of hell is the fearful. The fearful. Tell them, say there's no fear in me. Say, I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Say, I live by his faith in me. Throw away the mask. But let's ask ourselves a question. Now, they've not told us that there is a solution to COVID. But everybody is moving around the whole place without wearing masks. Yes, so what happened to COVID? Has it disappeared? <laughs> it's still around. So why are people not dying? Because now they are focusing on Ukraine war. <laughs> God has given them new assignments. <laughs> Ukraine war. So they've left us alone. If, there is, if that war is not there, they will be back with COVID-20. The Bible says in the book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 32, it says in the last days, the people that know their God, they shall be strong. And what will happen? They shall do exploits. Our generation must prove that God's word is true. God is not lying to us when he gave us the scripture. God is not lying to us. The name of Jesus is the biggest name on earth and in heaven and in hell. The name of Jesus. To know Jesus is to know life. To know Jesus is to know life. To know Jesus is to pass from death to life. John chapter 5 verse 24. Is to pass from death to life. How can you know Jesus and be afraid? It doesn't matter the person in the country. I said it one of the, one of the brokers and some people pick it up in London and blasted it all over the internet. And the people started blasting me anywhere from the old world. I love it. I love the blasting. Say <laughs> so we're not of those who, who wear masks. It's in the Bible. And I'll show you. Because the guy that picked the video, he didn't, show, he didn't quote the scripture. It doesn't matter whether you are apostle, senior prophet. It doesn't make any difference. Your credentials is Christ. You believe in Jesus? Let's read John 5, verse 24. Can I have this screen on, please? He says, Very, very, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, at everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation. Jesus is the one talking it. And is passed. So I have passed. From where? From death to life. So where I live is called life. See? 2 Corinthians 4, King James, verse 3, or verse 2. Let's read verse 2. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 2. But I've renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Let's read it from the message, verse 2, from the message. Come on now. I need a screen. This screen. Message. All right. Read the first three lines. 
No, no, no. Where are you reading now? Message. Verse 2. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing different things. Okay. Let's read it. Okay, let's read it. Since God has so generously left us in the world, we should not lose heart. Since God has so generously left us in the world, we should not lose heart. It's quoting verse 1. Now go to verse 2. Verse 2. We refuse to wear masks. In the Bible, can you, can you give us verse 2? It's verse 2. Verse 2. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 2. Message translation. <laughs> Technically, we are waiting for you. You are giving us verse 1 and 2. Remove verse 1. You can do it. Give it verse 2. <laughs> I want to see it before we start moving to this message. We ref- say, I refuse to wear a mask. Because if you wear masks, you are playing games. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. I, there's no argument. I didn't write the Bible. God says so. See. So all of you that, wear, that wore masks, make sure you go with the rapture of the church. Because there's no antichrist. You're already afraid. Or if Antichrist is around, you will not be there. Yes, sir. You are going with us to heaven. Yes, Let's read verse 2 again. I want you to see it. 7 Corinthians 4, verse 2, message translation. Great faith convention. <laughs> because after this convention, if I see you with mask, whether mistakenly, <laughs> God, they are still coming back. They are producing more masks. They are coming back. They are coming back. This time, they will say we should wear masks and gas. <laughs> Let's refer to. They, we, people will not stop. They are wicked. Come on, brother, tell us now. You are taking our time like this. All right. The brother is trying to sort it out. So we will tell them, say, I refuse to wear masks. Mask. And to play games. Play. Say the law, the law of, the of, of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is at work in me, and that law had made me free from the law of sin and death. I'm free of death. Say it very well. Say, I'm free of death. That's what the Bible says. Now, see there. He said, we refuse to wear masks and play games. We don't manipulate behind the scenes. How is shouting apostle, prophet, Inside is wearing mask. They said we should not come to church. There is nobody that will shut down the church of Jesus Christ. We are preparing ourselves. As they are preparing, we are also preparing. The next time they said if we should shut, shut, shut. What are you going to do? Pneumatical night. Not one venue. Not one venue. Pneumatical night all over the country. So when police run like this, they run like this. They join the fellowship. <laughs> so we will not wear masks praise God we refuse to wear masks and we don't maneuver behind the scene we don't twist God's word to suit ourselves see they were twisting God's word Jesus Christ said this son shall follow them that believe he said in my name they shall cast out devil he said they shall drink any deadly thing he shall know them we are still standing. We didn't wear mask. We are still standing. You wore the mask. Now your brethren know who you are. You are afraid of death. You are afraid of Satan. Then you say you are a great apostle. Of what? <laughs> so, in the life of faith, you must understand the law of the spirit of life. If you don't understand the law of the spirit of life, you will wear masks. Sometimes we see some people, they wear four masks. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. They are so afraid. And they are Christians. So full of fear. And the Bible says they are on their way to hell. See? The Bible says without faith, 
it is impossible to please God. What is faith? Faith is not a denial of facts. COVID is there. Okay. But I'm denying that fact. The ability and the right to determine the circumstances of my existence. It will not determine where I will go, who I will see, who I will talk to, what I will become. It doesn't matter what happened to the currency of Ghana. It doesn't change my destiny. See, whatever happened to the currency of the whole world, it doesn't change my destiny. The part of the just is as a shining light that shines more and more onto the perfect city. Glory to God. So let's go to Romans 3, verse 26. We are on the third law, the law of faith. If you miss this law of faith, probably you might not be a Christian. He said, to declare and say at this time, his righteousness, that God might be just and the justifier of them which believe in Jesus. So, where is boasting then? Tell them, say, where is boasting then? Tell them, say, it is excluded. By what law? Of works? No. He said, but by the law of faith. Don't ever think because you are nice, you will prosper. Big mistake by Christians. I have not done anything in the last three weeks. I have not done anything in the last one year. I'm a perfect, sinless Christian. You will see before. Good people have big problems. Wonderful Christians. You see them falling sick. You see them having challenges. They're asking why. I don't do anything wrong. I don't smoke. I don't carry women. I don't do anything wrong. I, I speak nice about people. Why am I sick? Because you are trying to live your life by works. I pray, I pray a long hour. Remember the story in the Bible? Jesus went to the temple and was watching two people praying. One guy came there, a Pharisee. He said, he was praying, he was just praying. Another guy came and put his hand on his chest. He said, oh God, forgive me, I'm a sinner. And the Pharisee looked at the other guy and said, ah, God, I'm not like him. He said, sinner, I'm a Pharisee. I keep the law. Jesus Christ answered. He said, that man that cried as a sinner, he went home justified. He said, but this Pharisee, he remained in sin. When it comes to the matter of faith, your good behavior will not get the result. Can I say it again? Don't be looking at good behavior. <laughs> Praise God. This is the mystery about Christianity. I showed you yesterday, I brought four people out. I said that one is Adam, one here is Jesus. Somebody here did something right. It doesn't change his condition. He got it from Adam and it's a gift. And you can't reject it. It stays with you. So when it comes to life of faith, don't think, oh, you know some people say, ah, I'm having a program. Pastors, all these pastors say, ah, I'm having a program. In the next one, we have to behave well. Why? So that when I start casting a devil, eh? they will know that, ah, this boy passed. <laughs> you will not cast out one demon. As I say, our righteousness is like a filthy rag. How do you want to use filthy rag to go and cast that devil? He said, our righteousness is like a filthy rag. It's tongue cloth. So as much as you are trying to be good and kind and nice, before the Lord is, you are dirty. That is why you believe in Jesus. You believe in what he has done. In the life of faith, it is about Jesus. Come on now. Are you ready? Now that Romans 3, verse, now we read verse 27 again. He said, wherefore? He said, where is the boasting then? It is excluded by what law of works? Nay, by the law of faith. Have you noticed those churches who preach a lot about law, they hardly win souls. You go to those congregations, you see anger. You see bitterness. And people like us, if you walk in, they say, mm, unbelievers. You know, they, they, so, they look at us so dirty. And Jesus Christ just follows us out. 
and stay with us. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Mr. Perfect. He told us, he said, I didn't come for sinners. I didn't come for the righteous. I came for sinners. We are not sinners. We're a child of God. But I want to see in the life of faith, don't think because you sow seeds, you should have harvest. I said tonight is a very huge night. <laughs> no, someone said, Pastor, <laughs> last year, Pastor, 2003, this woman just, she, 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 I think I've told you the story before, took Pastor Lisa's picture to, to White Garment Church that they should kill her. That I'm her husband. And I was about to get married then. And she was about 60 years. Ah, thank you, I like that. Hey, he. <laughs> I was not to. I wasn't up to 50 years. So, he said, I'm the husband. Then took the, 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 the guy, the people came to church, talked to us. My, my, when you notice what she noticed what was going on, she went to the police to report me to the police. Okay? So, the police now said I should come. So, all my church, I mean, I have a lot of people there, Nigeria, Kano State. All of them followed me to the police station. The police station was full of people. All my leaders, they were boiling like this. They want to squeeze the woman. They all know the woman. They want to squeeze. I said, calm down. So I sat down. I'll never forget that police. But he said, all of you, shut up here. You don't know what's going on between the, between the two of them. <laughs> oh, dear Jesus. He said, we don't know. When you come to man and woman, don't get involved. I was just listening. So the man said, eh, this pastor, every time, give him, give him, give him. I've given everything, no harvest. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you return back all my things. <laughs> ah, I laugh. You can sow from now till next year, no harvest. Why? The Bible talks about little foxes that spoil the vine. What destroys your harvest? Your mouth. I've been giving no harvest. Ah. You, are, you, just, <laughs> you just said it to yourself. You said no harvest. So let's enter the matter now. See, your life is not by works. God didn't say, listen to God, understand God. And I want to say something now. When it comes to seed sowing, understand God. God is not going to multiply your income. God doesn't multiply income. So I said tonight is very important. God multiplies seed. That's all he multiplies. He doesn't multiply incomes. He multiplies seeds. So when you begin to walk in the life of faith, your life is a seed. Jesus Christ, if you have a faith as small as a grain of mustard seed, he never told you we multiply incomes. He said, I multiply your seed soon and increase the fruit of your righteousness. God multiplies seeds. And when they multiply your seed, he knows you will have harvest. But if you don't have a seed, he knows you won't have harvest. So I'm going to come to that. I'm going to come to that. Now, in the life of faith, to understand this Romans 3, 26 and 27, we need to go to the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 5. They are all in the same Roman. Romans, the book of Romans. Okay? If you really want to understand the message of righteousness and faith, you read the book of Romans. Why? Because Paul was not the one that pioneered the church. He didn't pioneer this church in Rome. So he wrote to them the basic doctrine of Christianity. He was showing them how to be a Christian because he doesn't know what they believe. Now you go to Romans 10, verse 5. Let's read. Are you ready for today? He said, For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law. Moses described the righteousness which is of the law. What is that righteousness? That the man which doeth those things shall live by them. That is the way the law works. The law of Moses. To be righteous in the law of Moses, you have to do something. But in verse 6, he said, but... Say, but the righteousness which is of faith speak it on this wise. 
Say not in your heart. So where is it starting from? Your heart. Say not in your heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Don't say in your heart, I want God to come down to help me. Hey, are you listening to me? All those kind of crying, oh God, if you can just help me, oh God, if you can just help me, oh God, if you can just help me, you will not be helped. Don't, he's saying it, don't ask him how. How am I going to make it in life? Don't say, oh God, how am I going to have the money? Don't ask God how. Say not in your heart. Follow me now. Say not in your heart. He said, but what seeth it? What does the righteousness by faith Righteousness, which is of faith. What does he say? So the law of faith is the way of righteousness. I'll say that again. The law of faith is the way of righteousness. If you are going to be righteous and walk in righteousness, you're going to follow the law of faith. He said, but what does he say? He said, the word is nigh thee, even in your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. He said the word is so close. And, you know, understand what is going on here. The word is so close. He said so close is where? In your heart and in your mouth. Let, wait, let's, let's look into something. Let me finish reading it, then I'll, I'll pick something for you. Oh, I will, I will always be successful. I will always, do you know that, I mean, I'm, great, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to, to the Lord. I'm the, in, this, in this ministry, I pastor more people than, more region than anybody. I've been talking for so long. Pastor Chris gave me so many regions. I'm the pastor in America, United States of America. I'm the pastor in New Zealand. I'm the pastor in South Korea. They're all connected, they're all worshiping. I'm their pastor in China. I mean, I mean, almost two thirds of the. I'm their pastor in China. I'm their pastor in the Japan. I'm their pastor in Hong Kong. I'm their pastor in the, uh, even North Korea is also under my domain. You know, the the Pacific Island. Why talking? Talking. We stop too soon. Some of you, you don't talk again. You are into gossiping. You stop talking. You, now, you are now into life matters. Your job is to talk. If there's nothing to say, keep quiet. And keeping quiet can cost you. So you speak. Hallelujah. 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 Now, Moses said this thing first. Let's read where Moses said this thing. Moses described the righteousness. Paul now picked what Moses said and said, Things have changed. Deuteronomy 30. Let's read verse 12. Verse 11. Moses is talking. For this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. Like I read in verse 8, the word is not far. It is not in heaven that thou should say, who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou should say, who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. But the word is very nigh unto thee. <laughs> Can you see there? Yes, sir. It was in the law. God has not changed. I wish somebody can come from America to help me. Brother, that's not for a Christian. Somebody will cross the sea to come and help me. I wish my uncle, I wish God would talk to my uncle to help me. What kind of journey is that one? <laughs> God should go to your uncle first to come to help you. See? So we'll go beyond the sea and get somebody to help me. Young people don't think like that. 
You don't need man to help you. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, yeah. Who was there to help Jesus when he needed money? There was nobody there to help Jesus when he needed money. He said, Peter, go to the sea. The first fish you catch, you will see money there. And there was money. Who was there to help Jesus to feed 5,000 people? Men, women and children not counted. His Bible says in Jeremiah 17 verse 7, Cause be the man that trusts the man. No, my heart is not in man. My heart is in Jesus Christ. The son of the living God. Hallelujah. He is my Lord and Savior. He is my Lord. Hallelujah. He is the one that paid the price for me. I've never depended on any man. Mm -mm. Ah, no, no, no. It's not possible. Somebody comes into church. One guy came one time. You know, he was giving some money. He doesn't know me. <laughs> When his own money finished, that's what I'm starting. Then he started a church in this camp, in this town. Went on television, started blasting my name all over TV. I didn't answer him. Then he called Iraq. Iraq was in the choir there. Am I right? He called Iraq. He said he's come and be singing for him. Entice him with fifty thousand. Was it fifty thousand dollars? Call some of my leaders, my pastors, offer them fifty thousand dollars to come and be pastoring for you. He didn't say anything. The word is in my mouth. Mm. Yeah. I call you rock. I say, sit down there. He said, Am I right? He called, don't move. He didn't follow him. If I mention his name, you all know him. In this town. He said, don't go anywhere. Sit down. He was in the choir. He said, no, you can't sign music contract to be singing on his radio. That, that is the end of him. That would have been the end of him. Singing some funny song that God doesn't want. <laughs> Don't be led by opportunities. Don't listen to opportunities. Make sure you listen. Listen to your words. You refuse to follow. That's why they, they, it's so special. Iraq is special to me. He refused to, to follow. He, stay, he stays with me. He, he didn't have any church he was pastoring. He was just, he, was, he, was, he didn't even know he was going to pastor a church. Somebody offer you $50,000. That's how you change. <laughs> you change. I mean, $50,000 for a young boy. What do you think? You should have said, Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. Ah, shalab bro. So, this 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 pastor has never given me fifty thousand, and I don't give them anything. Yes, I don't give them money. Yes, sir. I'm not going to give you any money. I'll give you words. Yes, sir. That's what I'm giving you now. Words. That's all. It will pay your school fees. Yes, <laughs> it will build your house. It will give you a powerful wife. <laughs> it will give you a family. It will give you everything. That's all you need. What I'm giving you is what you need. You don't need money. Don't let anybody give you money. Give you words. Glory to God. So what happened here? Moses said it. He said, verse 14, Deuteronomy 30. He said, but the word is very nigh unto thee. In your mouth and your heart, that thou mayest do it. You see, in their own time, it was what? A doing. But in our time, he says, speaking. This is what surprised the angels. This salvation that we have received. Peter said, the angels seek to look into it. It was shocking to devil. All his life as a devil, you have to do something to get something from God. All his life as a devil. <laughs> then, Jesus came and died. He thought he has won. Then a new race began. This one, you cannot condemn them. This one, you can't send them to hell. Once they believe in Jesus, they do nothing again. All they do is what? Talking. They will couldn't believe it. He said, come out. And before he opened his eyes, he has come out. Ah. <laughs> this one will just say, come out. Before he will say, who are you? 
Go and fulfill the law. Go and keep the Ten Commandments. Am I, are we mates? <laughs> he was, I mean, pushing everybody around like that. But this guy, one guy just got born again yesterday. Today, he said, will come out. Before he could think, he was out. Huh? What happened? This guy. I thought it was yesterday, he was not increasing. He said, no, 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 no. This is not true. He tried to go back. He couldn't go back. Then the guy moved away to another place. Come out! That one also jump out. Ah. <laughs> they now discover that this Christian, this is different. So what can we do to stop them? Let them not talk. The reason why a man will go to heaven or hell is not that he did something wrong, that he didn't say something right. Jesus Christ says, by your words, Matthew 12, verse 6, thou shalt be condemned. By your words, thou shalt be justified. You shall be justified. So, let's go back to Romans 10. As it says, the law of faith is based on Romans 10, verse 8 this time. He said, but what said thee? The word is nigh thee. Where is the word? In your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which you preach. You see, you can see the, where it stopped with Moses. Moses said, then you do it. But Paul says, he didn't say then do it. He said, but we preach. Can you see? He removed the doing and put the New Testament, we preach. To preach means to announce. To announce. We announce. I announce who I am. I announce it. I announce it. I wake up in the morning. I open my window. I announce who I am. I step out of my room. I announce. Don't do anything. I announce. I say, if I do that, will money come? Leave the how to God. He is the how. God is the how. You are to do the talking. He will do the how. He will orchestrate it. He will do it in a way that it will happen. A woman was talking to a mountain in front of our street, you know, because there's, there was a mountain in front of our area, and so she has to drive long distance, you know, the way the, the road network, she has to drive long distance to, to pass that place. So one day, she woke up, she became a Christian. She started talking to the mountain in front of our street. <laughs> so it's better for them to construct, I mean, to have a road straight like this. So people were laughing at her. Mountain move in the name of Jesus. Every day she said, mountain move. So people say, I can physically come and move. Sister, stop talking. Then one day, the government came and said there's a new plan and busted the rock and created a road behind it. And what came to pass? The mountain actually moved. Government has to move the road. You will always have what you say. If government has to replace government, you will have what you say. Heaven and earth shall pass away. Jesus Christ said, but my word shall not pass away until every title, every dot is fulfilled. What have you said today? You have to be conscious of your talking. It says that the word of it, we should preach that, look at the principle here, that if thou shalt confess with your mouth, oh, hallelujah, the Lord Jesus, if thou shalt confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. If thou shalt believe with your heart. There are many Christians that believe. Believing is not enough. When you believe, you are made right with God. But you, are, you become the righteousness of God when you believe. But you, to enjoy the fruit of righteousness, you must speak. You have to speak. So what do we speak? He told us what to speak here. Look at it again. He said, if thou shalt confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus. The word is confess. Confess there means homologia in Greek. It means to speak the same thing in consent. Speaking the same thing in consent. Speaking the same thing in agreement with God. I'm not supposed to speak my feeling. I am to agree with God. To say things in agreement with God. 
Don't let us make Christianity so difficult. You know, when we're in church now, and in church, and that's why I love my pastor, Pastor Chris, he made Christianity so simple. We want, to, want people to know that we are educated, we are intelligent. You know, I have to be cautioning myself many times, you know, not to go in that direction. Not people to know that I know stuff. And so we bombard people's brain with many things till they don't know which one to follow. Christianity is simple. Confess. That's what we teach you in church. If you come to church and no confession, you wasted the service. What do we confess? We confess the lordship of Jesus. Look at it there. If that's a confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus. What do I confess? That Jesus is Lord over my money. Hey. I confess the lordship of Jesus. Jesus is Lord over my home. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over my business. I confess the lordship of Jesus. What do I confess? The lordship of Jesus. Don't just say I receive money. Jesus is Lord over my finances. Ah, lift up your hand and say it. Say Jesus is Lord. We confess what? The Lord Jesus. We confess the Lordship Jesus. He didn't ask you to confess your problem. He didn't ask you to confess your sin. He didn't ask you to confess what you are facing in life. I'm facing a lot of things. Makes no difference. Confess the Lordship of Jesus. Say, but I need to tell God what I'm facing. He said it's not necessary. Confess the Lordship of Jesus. A lot of things are happening in my life. I need to talk to somebody. You don't need to confess the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus is Lord over my home. Jesus is Lord over my children. Jesus is Lord over my womb. Therefore, I have, I have children. I'm, I have children. I get pregnant. You start by confessing the lordship of Jesus. Jesus is Lord over the church. Therefore, there are people in the church. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Jesus is Lord over my finances. Say it. Therefore, I have money. So don't just say, I have money. Start by saying, Jesus is Lord over my finances. He's Lord because I live by his faith. He's Lord over my body. He's Lord over my life. He's Lord over my future. He, therefore, I have a great future. He's Lord over my business. Therefore, I have a great business. Jesus Christ is Lord. Many people don't confess the Lordship of Jesus. And that's how Pastor Chris has been teaching us. That when we sing song, we must always put Lord Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Until his, his lordship is seen, nothing will come to you. He's lord over my leg. He's lord over my heart. He's lord over my body. Jesus is lord over my home, over my family. Jesus is lord over my finances. Therefore, I have money in abundance. He's lord over everything. There's no way his name is mentioned and that he doesn't have the greatest power. Jesus, he said, confess that Jesus is Lord. If you confess the Lordship of Jesus, he says, salvation is yours. That's what Philippians said. Philippians 2 verse 5. You confess the Lordship of Jesus. The Lordship of Jesus. Great faith is not trying to read a lot of Bible so I can have faith. Because the Christian in the, old, in the, in the early church, they didn't have Bible. So how did they have great faith? The church that Peter was in, the church that Paul pastor, they didn't have anything to read. They only have the Old Testament. So where did their faith come from? They only preach one message. Jesus Christ is Lord. That's it. A pastor preaching in his church, I think I told you that too. A pastor preaching in church, is all his Sunday service messages must be born again. Every Sunday when people come to church, Today's message is you must be born again. People now say, Pastor, it's okay. Now we'll be in any service every Sunday. He said, No. As long as somebody in church that is not born again, the message is still you must be born again. See? Wake up every morning and announce the Lordship of Jesus. That day you will have testimonies. Announce the Lordship of Jesus. Maybe you are driving a car and your car broke down on the road. It should not happen to a Christian, but let it, it happen to you. Say in the name of Jesus, Jesus is Lord over this car. He's Lord over my life. Therefore, I cannot die. Oh, Jesus is Lord over my business. Therefore, my business will prosper. So you come from the point of what? Lordship of Jesus. 
Lordship of Jesus. Let's read Philippians 2, verse, verse 5. Philippians 2, verse 5. Jesus is Lord in this church. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Anywhere you start saying Jesus is Lord, devil will start running away. They can't stay there. Let this might be you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. I love this. And took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Glory to God. Next verse. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Now let's read the verse 10. That at the name of Jesus. Come on, read with me now. Every knee should bow. Of things were in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And next one. And every tongue Next verse. And every tongue should what? Confess. That what? That what? What is your tongue supposed to confess? What is this your tongue supposed to be doing? To confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every tongue. Let your tongue be in every tongue. This is every tongue. Every tongue should confess. Is big, is huge. What he just said here is huge. This is your future. This is your glorious life. This is your beautiful life. Many Christians don't say it. They just say Jesus. No, Jesus is Lord over my house. Jesus is Lord over my life. Every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. As you confess the lordship of Jesus, you will please see this amazing life of glory that he will give to you. Let's, let's read again as we move into some, this law of faith. What is the law of faith? Confess that Jesus is Lord. We confess so many scriptures. It's good. Without confessing the lordship of Jesus. I know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Even though Jesus was rich, that's for my sake, he became poor. That means poverty, I might be rich. Good, good confession. But have you confessed Jesus Christ as Lord? This is where your glorious, or your glory life is. Let's read. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, your mouth was fashioned to announce the lordship of Jesus. The confession is made unto salvation. Say Jesus is Lord over my money and I can never be broke in my life. Say Jesus is Lord over my marriage. If you are not married, don't, don't, you don't have to say it. <laughs> Jesus is Lord over my marriage. If you are planning of money, you can, you can say it. Jesus is Lord over my marriage. Jesus is Lord over my children. Jesus is Lord over my home. And Jesus is the Lord of my body. And therefore, sickness cannot stay in my body. Disease cannot stay in my body. Pain cannot stay in my body. Maybe you are here, you have, you have, you have pain in your body, any part of your body. I want to put your hand there now and say now, Jesus is Lord over this part of my body. Come on, do it now. Do it now. Miracles happen here. Say, Jesus is Lord over my high, my, my knee, my waist. Mention that part of your body. Maybe there's a growth in your body. Put your hand on that growth. Say, in the name of the Lord, Jesus, you, Jesus is Lord over this body. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Say, in the name of Jesus. Jesus is Lord over my life. That's how you got born again. He said, thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. He didn't ask you to confess your sin. He didn't say, thou shalt confess all your errors. No, it's not necessary. Confess the Lordship of Jesus. Some people are trying to remind us of our sin. Leave them, leave them. You keep confessing the Lordship of Jesus. Glory to God. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, say, salvation is yours. Salvation. Talk to another person, say, because Jesus is your Lord. Prosperity is yours. 
Success is yours. Abundance is yours. Ah, shout a big hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. I can never be a failure in this life. Jesus is Lord. I can never lose in this life. Jesus is Lord. This is what they could not do in the, in the, in the Old Testament. Jesus was not available for them. So they have to make effort to be successful. There was nobody that could go ahead of them and make everything straight. So they have to make effort to be successful. They have to make effort to please God. They have to do everything. But who so look at into the perfect law of liberty? Continue to look. Pronouncing the lordship of Jesus. The business will show up. The money will show up. The contract will show up. Am I communicating to somebody here? The grace will be in abundance. It's called the grace of our Lord Jesus. That's what it is called. It is called the grace of the Lordship of Jesus. It's not just a grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus. We don't say the grace of Jesus. It's called the grace of our Lord Jesus. Why don't you have grace in your life? Because you don't recognize the Lordship of Jesus. This is the great faith. Why did that man receive a miracle for, for his servant? Because he recognized the Lordship of Jesus. He said, if you say to one, go, he will go. If you say to one, come, he will come. If you say to one, do, he will do. That is authority. That is lordship. He recognized that Jesus is lord over demons. Just like he too was lord over his own servants. He said, master, you don't need to come to my house. Speak the word only because you are lord. And my servant will be healed. Jesus turned, he turned back and went home. He said, I've never seen great faith like that. He didn't even pray for the person. He didn't pray for, he didn't say, your servant is healed, your servant is blessed. He said, he said, let's go. The devil is gone. The devil, they didn't pray. He didn't pray. The servant was healed. All this are prayer. Come on. Let's move on. God is tired of some prayers. God is tired of some prayers. Yes, we are praying the Lord. We pray a lot. We pray a lot. I pray a lot. I pray this morning. I pray this afternoon. We pray a lot, but not because of devil. Don't pray to cast out devil. God doesn't like it. He's defeated. How can you be praying to defeat someone that has been defeated? Let me give you a blow, small blow. When you cry, beat Ghana, what prayer do you want to pray? Or they beat Ghana? You are not smiling again. During World Cup, when they beat Ghana, there's no more prayer. If you keep praying, oh God, let Ghana win, let Ghana win. They're wasting time. The match has been announced. The winner has been announced. Why are you still praying? When the Bible says we are more than conquerors, for example, more than conquerors means we are not trying to conquer. More than conquerors doesn't mean we are now, you know, it doesn't mean that we are, we are, we've, we've won. When the Bible says you are more than conquerors, it didn't say you have won. More than conqueror means we are now celebrating the victory. The match has finished since. So we are now enjoying the, the spoil of war. The, arm, the uh, uh, enemy has been arrested, lock up. Nobody is fighting again. Yes, uh, uh, the battle, the warriors have dropped their uniform. They've removed the shirt. You came, they say you are more than conquerors. You are not conquering. Enjoy the spoil of war. Mm. Collect the gold, collect the silver. No, don't sweat again. The people that will stop you are locked up. Hey. The demon that will stop your progress, it doesn't exist. Yes. You are more than a conqueror. The money is yours. The business is yours. Everything is yours. Don't think that devil is stopping you. Many Christians are having this limitation. Dev no devil. If devil come into my money, it will become more money. Can't stop, can't stop my prosperity. I've been passing here for many years. I have money every time. I never, I'm never broke. I don't pray, oh God, don't let devil come into my money. It should enter. It will bring me money. De Jesus Christ said, Solomon said the same thing, Proverb. He said, when you cash a thief, you should go and bring seven times more. Mm. So that will not come to come near me because he knows he will go and bring seven times. So it's better leave me with what I have now. Because when he comes in, it's seven times. So if he tries to take 1,000, he will return 7,000. So what will he do for his own sake? He just lets him leave him with his 1,000. Because to take my 1,000, is that you are coming back with 7,000. He knows, I know. Both of us knows. So I always have money. 
are you listening to me? Jesus is Lord. So what do you say every morning? Wake up every morning, announce the Lordship of Jesus. You are going to announce the Lord. This is very important. This is the reason for this program. Many of us are not doing that. The man of God, Pastor Chris, you know, he kept correcting us. Christianity is not difficult. We made it so much difficult. It's not difficult. We are burning and a shining light. We are a product of Jesus Christ. We are a product of God. We are the word of God in the human person. My life is full of glory. Oh, it doesn't matter where you take me to. I've been talking to you like many years. Take me anywhere. I'm in America and they're pastors. They're all watching now. And they're pastors. And money, money keeps pouring into them. I don't have to go there. Once I come in, money comes in. Say it. Don't be clapping for me. I'm saying things you should say. Don't, don't, your life is not of works. Least any man should boast. So when you are boasting that, oh, pastor, I really work hard. I really work hard. I'm, I'm, I'm a graduate of the University of Legon. I finished from Harvard University. That's why I got the job. Mm -mm. Continue. Jesus is not your Lord. Those of us that Jesus is Lord. <laughs> we walk. We live by his faith. I might say you should not go to school. Go to school. I might say you should not get certificate. Get certificate. I might say live by your certificate. No. Thank God you're a lawyer. Thank God you're a doctor. Thank God you're an engineer. But don't live by it. The just shall live by faith. I told you before, I'm a chemical engineer, but I, never, I don't live by it. I live by the word of God. I live by the lordship of Jesus Christ. So when you are here, now don't be so proud of yourself, you know, so arrogantly full of yourself. Say so those of us that went to University of Lagos, we know who we are. No, 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 no. When you come to Christianity, you drop all those things outside. You drop all those. When we come in like this, Jesus is our Lord. And what follows it? Success, prosperity, joy, peace, health, strength, grace, and big ones, stability. You become a stable person. You can plan your future. I know the future will come. Isaiah 50 verse 4. The Bible says in Isaiah 54, The Lord had given me the tongue of the learned. Say it. That I should know how to speak a word. See, God wants you to know how to speak a word. There's a way we are supposed to talk. He said, the Lord has given me the tongue of the learned. Oh, glory to God. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes, Let's see Colossians 4 verse 6. Colossians 4 verse 6. Oh, when you live here, talk more than you eat. Yes, talk about the lordship of Jesus. Over your home, over your house, over your body. Let your speech be always, look at it, look at it. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how to talk. The same thing. That's why I said. That you may know how you ought to answer every man. Saul there means truth and clarity. Let's read from the Passion Translation. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt. What grace? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of the Lordship of Jesus. When you are talking, don't talk proud. Don't talk as if you, you, you make, you know, look at it. He said, let every word you speak be drenched with grace. And tampered with what? With truth and clarity. Let everybody know that your success is from Christ. Don't communicate to anybody that you made it yourself. He said, let your speech be clear. Let it be clear. Let it be clear. Tamper with truth and clarity. For then, for then, you'll be prepared to give a respectful answer to anyone who asks about your faith. What faith? The faith you have in the Lord Jesus. Because by the time they listen to you, they know that Jesus will make you. See? If somebody listens to you and they want to copy your business, you are going somewhere to fail. People should listen to you and want to love Jesus. They should know that your success is from Jesus. Look at it there. 
Let every word, not some word, let every word, this is where the Christian miss it. So when we now start talking about speaking words now, I'm not just saying one, just wake up in the morning, you just speak words and go home. Even in your daily talking. You see? So don't turn it to a religious event that you do in the morning, in the afternoon and the evening. Even when you are not doing it, when somebody greets you on the road, the next thing you are saying is, you know, you know it's about the lordship of Jesus. The people are listening to you and there's clarity in your communication that the reason why your business is doing well is because Jesus is your Lord. He said, let your, speak, your speech, every word you speak, be drenched with grace, tampered with truth and clarity. If your cell leader is always boasting, change the cell. Stay with a cell leader that say that my result is because Jesus is my Lord. Listen, if you know Jesus Christ, you won't want to be with anybody again. Not one person. It's everything. It's all that you need. It's your future. It's your eternity. It's your tomorrow. It's your past. We should talk with clarity. We should speak the truth. So it's not just confessing at a particular time, which is important, but living the life that Jesus is my Lord. James 1, James 3, verse 1. Oh, hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, say, Jesus is the Lord of my life. Therefore, I will not come into condemnation. There are people that are supposed to die tomorrow, but because Jesus is your Lord, it is canceled. I'm telling you, because Jesus is your Lord, some people are supposed to die of heart attack tomorrow, and I'm speaking prophetically. Because you have announced today that Jesus is your Lord, that news is canceled. Why do Christians die? Because they never talk about the Lordship of Jesus. They talk as if Jesus and them are mates. They talk as if, as if they are the one helping Jesus. So I'm in that church to help the pastor. I don't want you as my member. Don't come and help me. Don't say, I want to go to that church and help Pastor Ben Lawa. Don't come. I don't want you. you. Can't help me. Jesus is my Lord. How can you come and help me? Are you the Holy Ghost? Is something is wrong with your thinking? And you destroy that church. Because the day that person will try to correct you, say, upon everything I've done for you. See? I don't accept such offer. No, no, no. I'm going to help you, Pastor. The first year I passed on 1997, a man walked into the church. He was listening to me, he was so blessed. I could see them. Once I, they started making noise inside the church like that, I know them. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. He was shaking his head like that. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. Powerful message. Hmm. When I finished the service, he came. Very big. He came. He said, young man. I was very young. I'm still young. He said, young man, I will sponsor you. I'll put you on TV. This message you are preaching, the whole world need to hear it. If you are ready, follow me to my car. I said, please, let me free with the people. When I finish, as Pastor Chris has taught me, I said, I'm coming. Enter the office. Thank God there's a back door. <laughs> Enter the back door. I took off. That was the last time he came to my church. It's a lie from Satan. He said, Jesus Christ humbled himself. So what do you do? Lordship. Every time you announce the lordship of Jesus, demons live around you. They go away. Every time you announce the lordship of Jesus, your house is saved. Every time you announce the lordship of Jesus, your children are saved. Lordship of Jesus. James 3 verse 1. He said, my brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Next verse. For in many things we offend all, but if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle his body. So, 
How do you know a perfect Christian? Words. The words that come out of his mouth. Look at it there. He said, if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. Perfect man is not in your doing, it's in your saying. Mm. See that? For in many things, he said, in many things we offend people. But if you don't offend with what you say, you are a perfect man. Christian maturity is in your mouth. Mature Christian announced the Lordship of Jesus. Then he said, you'll be able to control your body. Your body will not be subject to sickness. Your body will not be subject to disease. He said, you'll be able also to bridle the whole body. I love Jesus Christ. Are you still with me? Now, let's go to, let's move up a little bit. Now, let's go to Romans. Before Romans, let's go to 2 Corinthians 4. We are still talking about the law of faith. This is the reason for this conference. But the three important laws, the first one, the perfect law of liberty. The second one, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The third one, the law of faith. Let's see this, how this law works. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 13. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 13. God's going to use you mightily. Yes. I every time I touch you, that's what the Spirit of God is saying. Second Corinthians 4, verse 13. Oh, I love the Holy Ghost. Second Corinthians 4, verse 13. The Bible says, We, having the same spirit of faith, what is he talking about? He's quoting David. According as it is written, Psalm 116, verse 10. He's quoting David. He's quoting David there. He said, we, having the same spirit of faith. Look at David said this. I believe, therefore have I spoken. I believe, therefore have I spoken. But David said the wrong thing. I was greatly afflicted. <laughs> but he has said some beautiful things before then. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians 12, verse 13. He said, we, having the same spirit of faith. But Paul... When Paul was writing this, he was not thinking about this last thing he mentioned. He was looking at the life of David, the man of God, David. How David gained the victory. How did David defeat or defeated Goliath? How? How did he defeat the Goliath? Not with weapons. Are you listening to me? He didn't defeat Goliath because he has weapons. He defeated Goliath with words. Words. He used words to kill Goliath. Let's read the story briefly. First Samuel 17, verse 45. He used words. <laughs> words will knock down the adversary. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up surely to defile Israel? Is he come up and he shall be the man that killed it? Okay. I mean, let's leave this one. Go to verse 47. Then said, Okay, that's verse 45. Go back to verse 45. Which one did you show me before? Then said David to the Philistine, that comest to me with it. He said, thou comest to me with a sword, with a spear, with a shield. He said, but I come to thee. I want, that's what I want to see. Can you say he defeated David? The Goliath. What, how did he defeat Goliath? Eric, tell me. The name, the name of the Lord. The Lordship of God. He said, I come against you in the name of the Lord of us. <laughs> come on now. He recognized that he said, Lord. The Lord of hosts. He said, I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the army of Israel, whom thou hast defied. The Lord. You see, he mentioned the Lordship of God. He didn't just talk. He said, I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. And God has given us that name. What is that name? Jesus. You are going for a business, I enter this business in the name of the Lord Jesus. It's done. That is it. That is it. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Money will come out of there. Business will come out of there. Listen, it doesn't take time at all. I tell you the truth. It doesn't take time at all. At least, I mean, if there's anybody that can tell you about these things, I'm a testimony. And I've been, been like this for more than 20 years. So I'm not a flash in the pan. I show up one year and we didn't say the person again. I'm ever there. Doesn't matter the currency, the nation. I find myself. 
Once Jesus is my Lord, money in that time belongs to me. Lift up your hand before the Lord. Say the Lordship of Jesus Christ. This is what you must say every time. This is what you must say every time. This is where the victory is. This is where your supply is. This is where your, you know, your miracle is. This is where everything is. This is the faith. So don't struggle with faith. Come on now. Are you still with me? Look at David there. So Paul came to the scene and said, we having the same spirit of faith like David. We having the same spirit of faith like David. When David faced Goliath, David didn't say to Goliath, today we will know who is on God's side. He didn't say anything like that. He didn't say today we will know who is God's going, God, God's going to help. Don't talk like that. You are facing challenge. He said, will God be on my side? No, nothing like that. David didn't say, Goliath, today you will know who is who. Announce who you are. I'm a success. I'm a victor. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus. By the Lordship of Jesus Christ, I possess that business. By the Lordship of Jesus Christ, I take over that business. I take over that industries. Talk like that. Come on, I need somebody to talk. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Young people, this is your future. This is where your future is. This is where your future is. Maybe you are talking. Let's go to Romans chapter 4. Gosh. David said, he said to Goliath, he said, I will cut off your head. The guy doesn't have anything in his hand though. Look at the guy. He said, I will cut off your head and then I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines to the bed of the hair. He said, then you shall know there is a Lord in Israel. And the Bible says in verse 50, there was no sword in David's hand. First Samuel 50. The Bible said there was no sword. No sword in the, in the hand of David. But the guy said, I will cut off your head. How can you cut off a Goliath's head? What are you going to use? The Bible says, but there was no sword in the hand of David. There was no sword. The guy didn't have any sword. He said, I will cut off your head. No, no job. No business. Nothing. He said, I buy the car. <laughs> ah, no sword in your hands. There was no sword in your hands. So I buy that house. But there's no cash in your account. No cash in your house. No money anywhere. Say, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I buy up that property. But no sword in your hands. No cash in your account. Stop looking at your account. Those that work not according to the senses, but according to the spirit. He said, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that work not according to the flesh. You are talking based on your account. You are talking based on the cash in your hand. You are looking at the sword in your hand. But there is a person who doesn't have any sword in his hand. You don't have any issue. You don't even have any accommodation. Maybe you are here, you are staying with a friend. Who is staying with his uncle? I mean, look at your journey. <laughs> you are staying with a friend. Who is staying with his uncle? You are not even. You are not even. You are not even a legal tenant. No sword in your hand, but you still talk. <laughs> Hallelujah! In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I buy your properties. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I buy your properties. But you don't, there is no sword in your hands. Don't move by your senses. Am I talking to somebody here? No family. <laughs> somebody came to me and said, Pastor, I'm an orphan. I said, I, I said, you are the best guy in town. <laughs> he didn't know what to say again. <laughs> he wanted sympathy. I said, you are orphan? Orphan? You are the best guy in town. <laughs> he thought, he thought, he wanted to, he wanted to sell tears to me. I refused to buy it. <laughs> Some people, when they come to talk to you, they want to transfer their they are failure life to you. Pastor, I'm not really doing well. I've suffered a long time. So I should join you to be crying. <laughs> Sorry. I said, I, I said, stop that nonsense. Go and sit down. I'm not going to buy this tear. I'm not buying it. They want to move me, move me according to their senses. I said, go and cry. When you finish crying, come back. I say, Pastor, I'm true. I said, I'm not true. Go and sit down. <laughs> Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. Brother, no sword in your hand. 
No sword in your hand, but you will buy it. Your salary is 500 Ghana CD, but you will buy it. You don't know anybody there, you will get it. Am I talking to somebody here? So stop looking at anything outside. In the law of faith, the senses are not required. In the law of faith, your good efforts are not required. In the law of faith, who you know is not required. In the law of faith, your, the compliments of your friends are not necessary. In the law of faith, only thing that matters is the lordship of Jesus. That's all. That's all. They say you will not marry. Okay. No sword in your hand. You don't have the perfume to attract anybody. <laughs> you, you can't even buy your food. Stop of buying perfume. Don't worry. You are like David. No sword in his hand. But after some few minutes, what happened? He was carrying Goliath's head. When I see you next week, you'll be carrying the head. Shagore! <laughs> When I see you next week, your fat check. Please sit down for a moment. Like a brother came to meet me yesterday, a couple. Eh? I should share the testimony. A couple. They came on Wednesday. Our first day was Wednesday. They came to see me. They gave me a thousand dollars. In this program, in this program, they said, Pastor, they want to sow seed. They gave a thousand dollars. I blessed them. They came the second day, which was Thursday. They gave an envelope. I've not opened it today. I don't even know how much was there. They came yesterday. I said, what do this brother, this couple, what do they want? I said, what is the problem? They said yesterday they got a contract of $3 million. No, you didn't, you didn't hear the figure. Iraq, you were there. Am I right? They got a contract of three million dollars yesterday. So this faith confession, if you like, they call it chicken. Release the word now. Release the word. Sit down for a moment. We are going somewhere. Uh, yesterday they got a contract of three million dollars in this town. I said, there's no sword in your hand. When I see you next week, it's with check. <laughs> When I see you next week, it's with the biggest contract in this city. So as you are watching me, sit down. The, the power of the Holy Ghost is everywhere here. You're going to do something for me on Monday. Go to everywhere you apply, apply for business. Go back there. Go ev pour into the city. The city is open. Go anywhere, knock any door, they will give it to you. I said next week you are coming back with the heads. You are coming back with the heads. You are coming back with testimonies. Sit down for a moment. Next week, the testimony will be on hand. Don't 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 move by walks. They came the first day, $1,000. The second day, I've not even opened the envelope. They came the third day, they said $3 million business. I said, what do you say? Three? The richest, the biggest, the most influential people in this country are sitting down here now. Receive it with a shout. Yeah. Receive it with a shout. Yeah. Sit down. Sit down. Don't worry if there's no sword in your hand. Don't worry that you don't have the certificate. Don't worry whether you are not legally registered for that business. They say only those who are registered legally can get it. Don't worry about it. 
Don't worry if they say, unless you are from Ashanti region. Only Ashanti region people can get it. Don't worry. Don't worry. They say it's only Ghanaian that can get it. There is no sword in your hands. But when I see you next week, I say when I see you next week, you will come with it. You will come with Say, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Say, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. With testimonies. You may be seated. Now, when it comes to dealing with Satan, the confession of God's word will bring you all the blessings of salvation. But your testimony is what will knock down the devil. So when, this is why many Christians lose the miracles. When they get it, they didn't testify. And so they will return and destroy the harvest. The Bible says in Revelation 12 verse 11 that they overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. So there's a difference between confession and testimony. As we are confessing the word, you are getting ready to share your testimony. And the fastest way to share testimony, the most powerful testimony is your tithe. Tithe is a testimony of grace. If I see your tithe, I know God has done something. Your tithe. Tithe. It's a testimony of God's grace on your life. You have to testify that God has been good. You have to testify. So as we are confessing the word, a lot is going on now. Devil is aware. Devil is running. But after getting the result, devil can come back and destroy the harvest. To stop that devil is to testify. That's why God said, bring your tithe and I will rebuke the devourer. Because why? Result has come. The devourer only comes when there is result. Because there's nothing to devour, why will he come to you? Are you listening to me? So how do you stop the devourer? Through your testimony. You testify. Once it happens, you send a message to the pastor. You send a message to me. Things have happened. Things are happening. Money has come. As we have said. Some people say money has come, but they don't mention the figure. Mention the figure. Because later on, we ask you for the tithe. <laughs> Give the tithe. I don't play with my tithe. Give the tithe. You give the tithe. More comes. Give the tithe. I would like to testify to the man of God, Pastor Chris, that God is helping me. Tight. He might not have time to sit down and hear all my stories. But if you see my check, he will pick for call back. The pastor will pick and say, Eric, what happened? I saw your envelope. Last month, a brother sent me a tithe of one million. No, no, no. You better take your handkerchief and clean your face. In this, In this town. I picked my phone. Malika I don't, I don't need any message. He has testified. Because if you don't have one million, will you give it? As I'm ministering to you like this, money is coming to you. Money is coming to you. Money is coming to you. You see? I said, don't worry. Don't look at the senses. Don't use your senses. There was no sword in David's hands. Did he kill Goliath? Did he cut off his head? Uh -uh. You will cut off the head. Romans 4. I'll close with this. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout. Nothing can stop your progress. Nothing can stop your success. Nothing, 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 nothing. Why? Jesus is Lord. Please sit down. 
Say it regular time. Let it be your speech. Let it be your communication. The Lordship of Jesus. The Lordship of Jesus. I will always have money. I will always have members. I will always have churches. I will always be growing. Do you know why? Not because I'm so good in anything. Because Jesus is the Lord. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. There is no boasting. I'm not better than anybody. Are you listening to me? Yes, I'm not better than anybody. Yes, sir. I just leverage on the Lordship of Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm not better than anybody. Yes, sir. No, 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 no. The Bible says only a fool compare himself with another. We're not supposed to compare ourselves with anybody. Because, mm -mm. in fact, the Bible says honor preferring one another than yourself. Mm. Prefer somebody else better than you. What is important is that Jesus is my Lord. And as he's my Lord, you can't stop my progress. Romans 4 verse 1. What shall we then say? That Abraham, our father, has pertained to the flesh at found. For if Abraham were justified by works, he had whereof to glory. He said, but not before God. Abraham discovered something. He said, if Abraham was justified by his work, then he can boast about it. He said, but not before God. Next verse. For what said the scripture? What does the word of God say about Abraham? The Bible says that Abraham, look at it there. Abraham believed God. That was all he did. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, next verse. Now, tell me, but say now. now. To him that worketh is the reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. He said, if you walk, if your result is by work, then it's not, it's not by grace. It's by debt. You have work, you should be paid. But to him that worketh not, verse 5. Oh, hallelujah. But to him that worketh not, lift up your hand before the Lord. To him that worketh not, hallelujah. This is my story. But believe it on him, believe it on Jesus that justified the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. I believe in the God that justified the ungodly. Lift up your hand and say it. Say it. Say, I believe in the God that justified the ungodly. Oh, shout a big hallelujah. I believe in the God that justified the ungodly. He justified the ungodly. The don't think that Oh, I need to behave well before I can get it. He said, no, this God is the God that look for the ungodly and say, you are right. Because I'm dealing with the matter here where some Christians say, I've been so bad I can't prosper. No. I've been so good I should prosper. No. <laughs> he said, what did Abraham discover? He found something about God. That is a God that justified the ungodly. Are you still with me, somebody? What does that mean? It means that God takes responsibility over my errors. God takes responsibility over my wrongdoings. My wrongdoings, my errors cannot stop my progress. God's people listen. He takes, this is it. Both past, present, and future. He justified the ungodly. He said, your faith in that Jesus is recorded for you for righteousness. I believe in God that justified the ungodly. Everything that you have ever done wrong or will ever done wrong has been set to by Jesus Christ. This is why some people's faith are shaking. They are shaking because every time they close their eyes, they remember they've been so bad. So God, and they will keep bringing the picture to them. And because of that, they can't succeed. But let's read what the Bible says. He said, but to him that walketh not, hallelujah, but believeth on him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So God takes responsibility over my life. Say it. 
Once I say it's my Lord, that means he takes responsibility over my wrongs, over my misbehavior. He takes responsibility and he's saying to you, keep running, keep running. Don't look back. Keep running. Don't look back. Sometimes some people want to remind us how bad we are. Don't join them. Sometimes some people want, to, want us to dig up our past, dig up our terrible. Let them be digging it. You keep running. They will destroy your faith. This is great faith. The centurion man that we read about, what did he know? What did he do? He was a soldier, a non-believer soldier. A non-believer soldier. But Jesus Christ says great. He says was great. Nothing was talked about his behavior. We don't know how terrible he was as a soldier. We don't know how many people he has killed. I'm very sure he has killed people before he can become a, cent a centurion, a commander of 100 army. He must have killed people. Jesus didn't say you, after you have killed so many people, it was not necessary. Our kingdom is not about doing. It's about speaking. This is why I love Jesus Christ. This is what they didn't have in the Old Testament. They didn't have Jesus. They didn't have Jesus. And, and, and many of gospel are finding it difficult to believe because they don't know Jesus. It takes responsibility for your wrong. It takes responsibility for your actions. Ephesians 1 verse 7 says, In whom we have received the remission of our sins. Ephesians 1 verse 7. In Christ, in Christ, in him, in him, in him, we, we have redemption through his blood. We have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Don't dig your past. It's not necessary. Maybe you've been terrible. Maybe you've been wicked. Maybe you have misbehaved. Like some of you are here, you have really, really misbehaved. <laughs> In the life of faith, it's not necessary. In the life of faith, it's not necessary. Young people have committed suicide in Europe because they couldn't withstand the pressure of their peers. Young people that have messed up their lives say, I can never amount to anything again. What does Bible talk to us in the Old Testament about Rahab the harlot? Rahab the harlot, her name entered the Bible just for one action. He saved the spies that Joshua sent to look at the promised land. And it, it, she spoke. He said, I believe that the Jewish people will take over this land. They will take over this Jericho. Please tell them to remember me. That's all that she said. And Jesus Christ came out from her. She was a great, 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 great grandmother of Jesus Christ. Because we're dealing with God that justified the ungodly. Nothing can limit you. Romans chapter 6 verse 14 says, Sin shall not have dominion over you. Why? Because you are not under the law, but under grace. It shall not dictate what you become. It shall not have dominion over you. It means it will not determine your future. It will not determine what you become. Because you are not under the law of Moses, you are under grace. It doesn't matter. It won't affect your story. This is the gospel. He said, for sin shall not have dominion over you. It will not determine where you go, who you will be, except you allow it. He said, why? Well, you are not under the law, but under grace. In the message of faith, it's two parts. Sin is with the law. Grace is with faith. A man that doeth them shall live by them. In our kingdom, a man that spoke shall live by them. Receive forgiveness and keep moving on. Receive forgiveness of sin. It's there. Receive it and be running. Don't stop. Don't dig your past. Don't dig your errors. Don't dig your mistake. Maybe you made wrong choices. You lost your business. You lost your finances. Don't stay there crying. Tonight, you say, Lord, a new beginning. A new beginning. And this beginning will be greater than the past. I'm going to have a better testimony, a better report, a better result, and start running. Verse 5, Romans 4, we are reading, verse 5. We are going somewhere, glory to God. 
Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. But to him that walketh not, hallelujah, but believe on him that justified the ungodly, what happened? His faith is counted for righteousness. His faith that God justified the ungodly, his faith in God is recorded for him for righteousness. Verse 6. Even David also described, look at the word there, the blessedness of the man. Lift up your hand before the Lord. Say, I'm a blessed man. He said, even David also described the blessedness of a man whom God imputed righteousness, oh, Libra Koto Kalaba, without works. La Kuse Kalaba. He said, Moses described a man that God so blessed, the blessedness of a man whom God will give righteousness without works. That's why I'm so blessed. Lift up your hand before the Lord. I'm super blessed. He said, David, David described the blessedness. When you start walking with God without works, you are a blessed man. He said, what David described the blessedness of the man whom God gives righteousness to without his works. Your works are not necessary. David described it. Verse 7. Say, this is the blessedness. Say what? Blessed are they <laughs> whose iniquities are forgiven, whose sins are covered. This is the blessedness. God covered it. Say, keep running. Yes, sir. Don't go and dig it up. Yes, sir. He said, that man is blessed. Are you not surprised? A terrible guy is getting contract. A powerful, oligorized guy. Nothing. Because he's walking by works. Understand this, this gospel. This message of faith. He said, David described the blessedness of man whom God imputes righteousness without work. Saying, blessed is that man to whom God whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Next verse. Oh. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not input sin. Next verse. Dear Jesus. He said, come in this blessed then, then upon the circumcision only, upon, or upon the on circumcision, is it only for the Jews? Also, for we say that faith was recorded to Abraham for righteousness. Why? Next verse. How was it reckoned? When did Abraham was blessed? Was it when he was circumcised? Or uncircumcised? Remember? It was after Abraham, God blessed, that he was circumcised. Not in circumcision, but in circumcision, on circumcision. So Abraham was not yet a Jew when God made him right. Next verse. This is the gospel. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of faith, which he had yet been uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised. That, next verse, that righteousness might be imputed to them also. And became the father of circumcision to them, who are not of the circumcision only, but also walk in the step of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had been yet uncircumcised. We are going somewhere. Next verse. For the promise. Lift up your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus. It doesn't matter your past. From this day, your life of greatness has started. Yeah. Don't look back. Don't dig up your past. Don't dig up your errors. You will not be blessed like that. Don't dig up your mistake. Let it go. Don't dig it up. Stand on your feet. Lift your hand before the Lord. You cannot be stopped. Not even your errors can stop you. For the promise, lift your hand before the Lord, that Abraham should be the owner of the world was not to Abraham or his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. And what is the righteousness of faith? We speak. Lift up your hand now. The word belongs to you. Lift up your hand. The word belongs to you. Before Jesus come, we must reign. Are you listening to me? Before Jesus come, we must take over. 
Before Jesus comes, we must dominate. At this moment, I want you to activate the law of faith by speaking. Activate that law. Activate the law of faith. You are the hair. The hair of the world. Oh. Let the word come out of your mouth. Announce the lordship of Jesus. Over your home. Over your life. Over your future. Jesus is lord over my finances. I want you to speak now. I want to speak now. Don't dig up your past. Let it go. It will not determine your future. He says, sin shall not reign over you. Because you are not under the law, you are under grace. Those who are under the law, they are condemned. Grace upon grace. Don't look around. I want to speak. Tomorrow is the final day. Here I come. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. In this service today, the Lord dealt with the errors of people. It's not necessary. Do you know in the New Testament, we're not supposed to ask for forgiveness. We're supposed to collect forgiveness. Do you understand what I just said? It's available. Is available. Pick it and keep moving. That's what the Bible says. He said, in whom we have. Hey, let's put it back there. Ephesians 1 verse 7. He said, in whom? What did he say? We have. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want you to see there. Ephesians 1 verse 7. Look at there. In whom we read it for me. What do you see there? Read it. We what? Say I have. I have. Why are you asking again? In Christ Jesus, look at it. I'm not, I'm not speaking something. I just want to, because people read religious, they don't know who is a Christian. They read their mind to scriptures. Look at it. Can we read it? Can we read the Bible? Okay. Do you understand English? Read it for me. One, two, go. In whom? We have. Do, do you hear that? Do you hear that? We what? We have. We, do we have? Should we ask for it? No. no, no, I'm asking. Do you need to ask for what you have? No. God says you have it. So when people start asking God for forgiveness, because they, they won't get it. Because the Bible says we have. It's paid. It's with you. Use it anytime. Oh, lift your hand. Whatever your errors. I'm not praying. If I pray, which is my prayer? <laughs> you have redemption through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sins. You have the forgiveness of sins. This is what the Bible says. It is if you ask for forgiveness of sin. We have it according to the riches of his grace. Now, lift your hand before the Lord. That mistake will not have dominion over you again. Yeah. Why? Because you are never under it. You are the one dragging yourself into it. You are under grace. Stretch your hands all then. Lift your hands. You are under grace. From this day. He said, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute the Lord will impute righteousness without works. You are blessed. Yes. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I say you are blessed. Open your mouth now. Begin to say it. Begin to say it. Say in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm blessed in this business. From today, this business is blessed. I see testimonies. I see miracles. I see supply. I see a complete turnaround. Be talking now. Be talking. Everybody talk. Be talking. I have. I have. I have. In the name of the Lord Jesus. That business not only is restored, it comes with greater profits. Talk. Speak. Speak. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I have it. I have it. Say in the name of the Lord Jesus, I have it. I have my business back. I have my shop back. I have my store back. I have my market back. I have my customers back. I have the market back. Be talking. Be talking. Be talking. Jesus is Lord over my life. I can never be a failure. Say it. Say it. Jesus is Lord over my life. I'm not subject to sickness. I'm not under sickness. Jesus is Lord. I'm rich in all things. I'm rich in all things. I'm favored in all things. I'm blessed in all things. I come back with testimonies. I'm going to share my testimonies. I'm going to share my testimonies. I come back with results. Because Jesus is Lord. There's no fear in me. 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 I function by the law of faith. Lift your hands. The law of faith. Not the law of works. My life is by faith, not works. Faith in the Lordship of Jesus. Not in my effort. Speak in tongues. Not in, by my efforts, not by who I know. I know the one who knows all things. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. The Lord Jesus. Lord of my life. Lord of my home. Lord of my heart. Lord of my soul. Lord over my future. Jesus is the Lord of my future. Therefore, there's no death. No death in my future. Because Jesus is the Lord over my future. No health. I will never go to hell. Say it. Say never. Jesus is the Lord of my life. I will never go to hell. Never, 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 never. Shout glory! Go back to your seat. It's done. It's done! It's done. Acts 13, verse 37. Man of God, what's going on in your heart? Acts 13, verse 37. Let's read. But he whom God raised again, talking about Jesus, saw no corruption. Verse 38. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man, Jesus Christ, is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him, Libra, this Kele Riba, all that believe, this is one of the biggest scriptures in the Bible, all that believe in Jesus are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. This is too big. 
If this guy do this thing in the Old Testament, he will be killed. In the New Testament, he said he has not done anything. Look at it. Then. This is one of the biggest verse in the Bible. By Jesus Christ, all that believe, all that believe in Jesus Christ, they are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. The word justified means declared not guilty. Everything the law of Moses says you are guilty of, guilty of, guilty of, guilty of, guilty of. In Christ Jesus, not guilty, not guilty, not guilty, not guilty. This is the law of faith. In Moses, you are supposed to be stoned to death. In Christ Jesus, not guilty, not guilty, not guilty, not guilty. Why? He paid for it. Jesus paid for it. See there. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Next verse. Beware therefore, so he warned you. Beware therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of the prophets. What of that was spoken by the prophets? You despise us. Beware that you don't despise what God has done. Beware that you don't reject it. He said, but I will walk a walk in your day. For I will walk a walk in your days. A walk which shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. How can you tell somebody that is a murderer that in Christ Jesus is free? He said, don't despise it. In Hebrews 12, verse 25. Hebrews 12, verse 25. See, tell them, but say, see, see. That you refuse not him that speaketh. Don't refuse what Jesus is telling you. He said, make sure. For if they escape not, who refuse him that speak on it? Much more shall not we escape if you turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Don't refuse what God is saying. Leave ye without the weight of your past. Lift up your hand before the Lord. Live ye without the weight of your errors. Live ye without the weight of your mistakes. These are the things that destroy faith. People are afraid because they've done something wrong and so they look at their life. They say, oh, I can't make it in life. No, you will make it in life. Because there is a God that justified the ungodly. Keep running. Don't look back. And tonight, I minister grace to you. Amen. Lift up your hand before the Lord. I minister grace to you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, by the Lordship of Jesus Christ, your journey of prosperity has moved to another level. Every one of you. Every one of you. Every one of you. Every one of you. Even as you are thinking now, whatever you are thinking now is coming to pass. Whatever you are thinking now, the Lord is granting it for you. He says he's able to do it. Speak in tongues. Iraq, talk to us. Thank you, sir. Pastor, sir, um, in the scriptures, self-righteousness is abhorred by God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, Paul said, But I fear less by any means, as the serpent begat Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Pastor, sometimes people think, is it this simple? Is it, I mean, to, to, to make it, uh, to, to get to that place I want to be, you, so, so, I, all I should do is to say, is it that simple? But Paul says, he doesn't want their minds to be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Pastor, sir, it is that simple. It is that simple. 
it is that simple. And so, Moses, you know, the thing about self righteousness is that it makes you feel like you deserve it. You deserve it. You have done something. Yes, sir. I've, I've, I've fasted for. Gosh, I fasted though. Also, I, I know someone who came and told me he has fasted for 500 days. Yeah. That's so sad. By, by the time he was finished, you'll be wondering if you're a Christian. <laughs> but by, by the time he finished saying all the things, I has fasted for 500 days. But, sir, that is not what God is looking at. If it's coming from the place of works, it's already rejected by God. And Moses had the opportunity, the first time God told him to strike the rock, he struck it. The next time God says speak. God says speak. He, he still could, struck it. He still went to strike it. Because God has to changed work. things. Yes, sir. The first one is the Old Testament. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This new one is New Testament. He says speak it. How can you stand in front of the rock and say water come out? Yes. The person is something's wrong with his head. Yes, sir. Just stand in front of the rock. You say, water, come out. But that's New Testament. Yes, sir. Amazing. Thank you, sir. Speak to your rock. Speak to your rock. Before you continue, speak to anything. Anything that is refused to bring money, speak to it. They're not speaking. It's in your mouth. It's in your mouth. And, and that sent Moses... Away from it. Yes, sir. A great man of God. Yes, sir. One mistake. Yes, sir. What is the mistake of not talking? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You see, he was too full of the law. Yes, sir. He so couldn't move to enter. He couldn't enter New Testament. Yes, sir. He was so full of do something. Do something. Do something. Do something. <laughs> do something. <laughs> you know that what he told them? Yes, I get you water. Yes, sir. Are you the one getting them water, Moses? Yeah. <laughs> Because it wasn't him. It wasn't him. But what's that? Striking makes you feel like I've done something. I've done something I'm an action man. Yeah. Power. Power. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sir. And what's the word you said concerning, you know, don't dig up your past? Was it so important that because the devil uses your past against you, the devil always tries to bring it. Just so that he can slow your steps. Because anytime, um, like uh, the Bible says, remember not the former things. Remember not the former things. Because the former things can, you know, can, they can arrest what is ahead of you. So Paul said, So this one thing I do is mm -hmm. forgetting all those things Which are behind. that are behind. He said, Many I people pressed. Says, Don't forget those things. Are and then I'll forget this. They have diaries. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So it's just believing and accepting what Jesus did and running with it, sir. Thank That's you, sir. That's a great faith. Yes, sir. That is the faith. That is the great faith. Yes, sir. That I, can, I will refuse to look at the past. Yes, sir. I will refuse to consider that. There is no faith greater than that. Yes, sir. I will refuse to say this past will determine my future. Yes, sir. There is no faith greater than that. No faith greater than that. Every time you look behind, yes, sir. you lose grace. Mm. Every time. You don't look. Pastor, I, I, I went to, I went to um, I, I, when I started using the treadmill, the first time I used the treadmill, yes. as I was in, on it, you I noticed that back. the moment you look back, you start slowing down. The moment you start looking back, you start slowing down. You can't move forward. You can never move forward. Nobody run forward backward. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Am I right? Yes, sir. You can't run forward looking, looking backward. backward. Yes, sir. This night, your past is over. Yeah. Lift up your hands. That's what the Spirit of God is dealing with this night because it's a weight on many of you here. It's a weight. And I just show you a scripture in Acts 13 verse 38 that whatsoever the law of Moses could not justify you, in Christ Jesus, you are declared not guilty. This is the biggest thing about our work with God. Somebody said, if you keep saying this to people, you're encouraging them to sin. I'm not, we're not encouraging them to sin because once there is light, there's no darkness. No, it's not possible. He said, be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man, 
is preached unto you. In fact, King James used, it's not just like being forgiveness, it's aphasis in Greek. It's like the redemption of sin. Redemption of sin. Okay? Because forgiveness and redemption, like I showed in Ephesians 1 verse 7, you don't ask God for it. It is yours. I don't know why Christians don't read the Bible. The Bible says all things are yours. What do you think is that mean? It means forgiveness, grace, love, children, money. Is there anything outside all things? All things are yours. All things. This is why devil doesn't understand the his shock about Christianity. And that's why he's attacking Christianity. And the best way to attack a nation is to attack them from inside. Because if they are united, you can't defeat them. So, they will raise up ministers who doesn't believe the truth. So, they preach the law. And Christians are, they want to do something to know that they are serving God. I've not done anything wrong the last three weeks. Continue. You are not blessed. You are not prospering by works. You are not going to heaven by works. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's what brought me salvation. That's what brought me eternity. That's what will pilot my life every day. Lift up your hand before the Lord. God bless you all. I love you all. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, lift your hand and thank God. Lift your hand and thank Him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are my peace. In you I find my rest. In you there's everything. Have no You are my song. You are my, my man. 